Hey Reddit, this is Geodesy. I'm back with another video for you. Uh, we had a lot of requests to see some information about batteries, battery types, battery chemistries, and kind of their, specifically their application to flashlights. Uh, I think it's a very important video and it's the one I wanted to do next. Uh, just, you know, because you see so much variation in batteries and you hear about different lights that can run in different voltage ranges and, you know, people doubling their output with a certain battery chemistry. So you think, you know, what's the drawback to that? And there are some drawbacks and we'll talk about those. But in general, just kind of wanted to do a, a rundown of the different battery chemistries and types and sizes. Uh, try and hit some of the nomenclature that you're going to encounter when you're reading about batteries. And I'll say right off the get-go that a really great place for information, um, a, a resource that I rely on heavily when people ask me questions and I'm kind of like, ooh, wow, I don't know, uh, is Battery University. It's a website, just batteryuniversity.com. I'll link that in the, the comments here for the video. Uh, but check it out, you know, read through there. You can, you know, if you want, you can skip all the history of batteries and everything else, though I find it interesting. Um, and you can skip to the sections about the various chemistries and the applications. And the site is, is updated, you know, with developments in battery technology, so you can kind of follow, you know, some of the newest things that come out. Um, if in reading through there you see something that contradicts something that I say, definitely you should consider that website, uh, The Authority, and you know be sure to remind me so I can modify or amend or edit anything that I say. I'm definitely not an expert. I'm definitely not a chemist. Uh, everything that I know about batteries essentially comes from my flashlight hobby. So um, anyway, with that, we'll get started here. Y you see I've got a bunch of batteries laid out in front of me here and, and some of the lights that I pulled them out of. Um, I've kind of stack them, you know, just in order of size, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually tackle this in terms of chemistry by chemistry. So, you know, the we'll kind of start with the basic, something that everybody recognizes, and that's your, your typical alkaline cell. Here's a, a Duracell alkaline AA. I've got a, a D cell over here that came out of my, my big mag. Um, this, you know, this is the cheapest battery you can buy. I mean, you can get even cheaper. I've got some of these Enercell brand here that I think come from... Um, Radio Shack or something like that, but you can get insanely good deals on bulk AA battery buys because they're such a ubiquitous battery. Um, but as as you've probably heard, if you're looking at at using these in high end flashlights, they have some drawbacks. Um, you know, number one is that they can leak just by nature, the way the cell's constructed and and the anode cathode material and the relationship. If left in a light, for example, for a long time, you know, a light that you throw in your car, a light that you keep in your closet, uh, people will go, you know, to use their light after six months or a year of not having touched it. And sure enough, you've got, you know, this kind of uh, alkali, leaky um, substance all inside your light, which of course can short your electronics if you're not careful. And, you know, in, in, the, very, in the very best case, it just makes a mess of your light. In the worst case, it can render your light not functional. So that's one drawback. Um, something else that, that we'll have to get into a little bit later um, as I talk about kind of the performance of the different batteries, but is, is their, their performance under load. And by load, I mean when you're trying to draw a significant amount of current from a light, um, these don't perform as well as a lithium or a nymph or some of the other battery chemistries we'll talk about. But uh, the advantage is that they're cheap and they're available everywhere. And I, I've talked to a lot of people that like the idea of keeping a light designed specifically to run on or that runs very well on just alkaline double A's because they're so available. You can find them at every gas station, convenience store, um, you know, kind of around the world. So anyway, that's that's a little bit about your alkaline batteries. Um, talk a little bit about nymphs, uh, nickel metal hydride. I have a couple different examples here. Basically, both of these are in a loops. Uh, in a loops, a brand, it's created by Sanyo. Um, oop, put them back in the view here. Uh, the blue in a loop you see is, is a little bit of an older version. This is actually still an updated version from the really popular first iteration of the in a loop that came out. Um, these are nickel metal hydride cells. They're rechargeable. Um, oh, obviously, I forgot to mention about the alkaline cells that they're not rechargeable. These are considered primary batteries, so you you they're one and done type usage. But with the nymphs, you you can recharge them, and they sell a very inexpensive recharge or charger that comes with the batteries. A lot of times, you can buy a packet at Costco. Um, of course, there's several other much more expensive uh, chargers out there. We can talk a little bit about that later. But the the Nymph is great for a couple reasons. Obviously, first of all, it's rechargeable. Um, second of all, it performs pretty well under load. You can put quite a, a a pretty high current you can draw from these without you know without experiencing a lot of uh, voltage sag. Um, and you know they're, they're 
recharge cycles are getting higher and higher. Every time Sanyo releases a new version of these, the capacity grows, the number of cycles you can charge them grows. That's this uh, AA or double X in a loop here, I think is the highest capacity in a loop they have currently. Um, you, what is it, 20, 2,400 milliamp hours. So, you know, that's, that's really good for a rechargeable cell. Uh, of course, I think you lose a few cycles. They say, you know, only 1,500 versus 2,000 recharge cycles or something like that. Don't quote me on that number. Um, but otherwise, they're they're basically a drop-in replacement for your AA alkaline cell. Um, these are, these are you know, rated at 1.2 volts instead of the 1.5 volts uh, for the alkaline cell. Um, but in practice, when you apply a load, these are going to sag a lot less. So whereas you may start off with you know two double a alkaline cells in series gives you six volts or around six volts uh under load that's going to drop you know maybe 5.5 or something and we can run a couple tests like that here later um the inner loops aren't going to drop as much they're not going to sag so under load if your light has a low voltage cutout circuit that's designed not to let it run you know over drain itself um you'll still be able to run these most of the time there are few things that I have, never flashlights, but there are a few other electronics I've tried to run these in where for whatever reason the, the gadget didn't like the, the end loops and I couldn't use the rechargeable cells. Um, the, the, the nymph chemistry has come a long ways. It's, it's was known for discharging itself. I mean, nymph, rechargeable nymph batteries have been around for a long time or relatively long. Um, only recently has the end loop, you know, kind of become more popular because it they changed up the chemistry a little bit, or they changed up the, the, I think, the separator material or something, so that now they're calling these low self-discharge. And that's one of the biggest disadvantages to a, a straight-up nymph cell. They tend to discharge themselves really quickly. Some of the old nymphs would discharge themselves, you know, 10 or 15, 20% in the first day, and then very slowly thereafter, you know, every month or so, you lose another 10% charge, um, which, you know, meant that these weren't good for devices that where you were going to, you know, a flashlight, for example, that you want to keep in your glove compartment or in the center console of your car, somewhere where you're only going to use it every once in a while. Because then you go to use it and you've only got a small percentage of your battery uh, charge remaining. Um, but these LSD is the term they use, that's low self-discharge uh, nymphs, they will last a lot longer. The lifetime between charges is a lot better. I think you get, you know, 20% uh, loss in capacity over a year, which is a lot better. Um, and if you're not if you're not at least inspecting your batteries once a year to make sure they're you know still intact, your light still works and everything, then you're probably you probably got other things you should worry about. But uh, so yeah, that's, that's kind of the reason for the popularity I think of the end loops is the low self discharge. There are other companies now that have adopted the low self discharge tactic Tenergy that makes these big uh, nymphs over here that I'll talk about later. They also have some LSD cells. Um, but anyway, that's 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 the end loop. Uh, pretty good under load. Uh, rechargeable, very safe chemistry, um, you know, compared to a lithium ion, which I'll talk about uh, here in a second. But otherwise, a, a pretty good battery and a very, very good um, option, especially for those people who are looking for replacements for AA cells, alkaline cells. Uh, the next, next chemistry I'll talk about is the lithium, uh, primary lithium. So the one you're probably most familiar with, um, if you're just a general electronics consumer is, for example, we call this the Energizer L91. I think that's the, the product number the Energizer uses, but it's their advanced lithium. Sometimes you'll see ultimate lithium. Um, it's a, it's a primary cell. It's not rechargeable. Um, these lithium cells are advertised as lasting a lot longer than an alkaline cell. And in general, that's true. They have a very high uh, specific energy and last uh, a really long time in you know high or medium drain applications um, you'll still get a little bit better performance compared to an alkaline cell in a very low current low drain application uh, the the it won't be as noticeable the difference won't be as noticeable but it, it's still there um, another great thing about these lithium cells that you know makes them um, or an advantage over the the primary alkalines uh, they work in really low temperatures 
uh, when I go skiing and I'm carrying, you know, a camera or a flashlight or something like that, I tend to carry lithium cells in there because you pull it out to use your camera or something like that at altitude up on the mountain when it's, you know, near freezing and sometimes your camera won't even come on, your light won't light up if you've got alkaline cells in there. These lithium cells tend to perform pretty well in those situations. Um, by contrast, you have to be careful uh, with the high end temperature though. I think the, the melting temperature of lithium is something like 150 degrees. So you, you know, you when you start using them in those kind of circumstances, you, you have to be careful. Um, you get some thermal runaway that can happen, but you know, we'll, again, we'll talk a little bit about that later. Um, the you'll hear the CR one two three or CR one two three A. This is this is one of those cells. This is a battery station um, branded one. Here's a Surefire branded one. There's lots of different brands. I, I've said before in some posts here on Reddit that um, there are a ton of these batteries that are branded differently that are literally all the same cell. They're all made by Panasonic in their, their factory in Georgia. I forget exactly where, but I think it's, you know, it's Sanyo, Panasonic, Battery Station, Surefire, Energizer, Duracell, and possibly some others that I'm forgetting. They're all the same exact cell. They're all pretty high quality cells. Uh, they're made by Panasonic and uh, they will all perform very similarly. There have been several independent tests where they try to identify the difference and really they all perform consistently the same because they really are the same cell to start out with. They're just branded differently. Now because of that branding you pay a little bit more money for a Surefire cell than you will for a battery station cell for example. Uh, and you pay a little bit more for an Energizer or a Duracell than you will for um, you know some of the other the other rebranded versions. But at any given time because the cells are all the same if you spot a good deal you know on the internet or in the store for a, a bunch of them in bulk and you can get them cheap go ahead and grab them up and rest assured that they're they're gonna last a long time. That's something else I forgot to mention that one of the advantages these lithium cells they have a shelf life of like 10 years so the the, the self-discharge um, issue that we were talking about with the nymphs you're not going to experience that with these. These keep their charge for a very very long time. Um, I don't know anybody who you know goes back and tries to use batteries that have been sitting around for 10 years but I'm sure it happens. Um, the primary lithium cells, you know, here we are, a AAA version as well. This is another Energizer Ultimate Lithium AAA. Um, when you get down to the, the AAA size batteries, the capacity is kind of sometimes what you struggle with. So it's really nice to have a relatively high capacity uh, AAA sized cell uh, that you can use. So that, that's the primary lithium. You'll hear primaries, we just toss around the term primaries. It's mostly distinguished between lithium, primary lithium cells and lithium, lithium ion cells, which we'll talk about next here. But once again, primary meaning just that you can't recharge them. So, all right, put those back. Um, now let's, let's talk about lithium ion. Um, lithium ion cells are, you know, here's an example. I've got this AW18650 lithium ion. I think I've got a, what I've got here? 16340. Um, these are, Lithium cobalt oxide cells specifically. There are several different chemistries of lithium ion that get kind of grouped into the, the single term lithium ion. Um, you know, your lithium manganese, lithium cobalt oxide, and several others. Um, usually lipo cells, lithium polymer cells are, are talked about a little bit differently and, and we don't tend to use those a lot in flashlights yet. I have a feeling that there's, that we're kind of on the cusp of a new generation of, of batteries. Um, we've primarily use them in in hobbies though i mean so you know uh rc cars planes helicopters things like that with the, all the brushless motors now that are ever demand for really high current you've got these lipo battery packs and they're, they're really great for that uh, but they haven't quite migrated into the flashlight arena yet um, so this you know this this type of cell this lithium cobalt oxide cell is very very popular it's the one you tend to see used most uh, these aw cells have a protection circuit um, the the reason sort of the need for the protection circuit um, is as I mentioned you know you get you get this thermal runaway phenomenon that occurs with lithium cells where you know when you get a short in the battery um, you they can vent um, you know energetically vent which is another way of saying you know explode or or rather just vent violently with a flame um, and that's something that obviously these manufacturers are trying to prevent so they've put in these these protection circuits in the heads of these lights that when they detect themselves being over discharged which I believe it's the, the over discharge that causes the issue. When you reduce the capacity of the battery, the charge capacity, you lower the the temperature at which these can start to 
sort of do that thermal runaway. Um, so a fully charged cell is a lot safer. Now these have these cutout circuits so that when you drop below a certain voltage, and it varies a little bit by cell, um, but they'll just cut out to prevent you from causing any issues.